Y'all fine, y'all fine. Mr. King on sharp tonight. He said he not. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ms. Bond, you, you, uh, you're free to address the board. Okay. So I'm here to support Shasta Little for Ombudsman. You know, I have been watching these meetings and I have been hearing the chatter. And let me just say this. You can be a doctor, you can be an attorney, you can be a school teacher, but guess what? You could have went to school and got all of those different degrees. However, if you never worked in the field, it's new to you. No matter what job you go to or come from, you might have experience in certain areas of that position. But when you get into that position, you have no experience because someone has to teach you. She's been working in this position up under uh, the other was Mrs. Dorsey, and she's been her direct assistant. So to say someone doesn't qualify, and she's been doing this for over a year now, she has the degrees that you're looking for. There's plenty of people that may have a degree in something else, but does not have a degree in that particular field. But people are trained. So I'm kind of disappointed that she's been through this process and the disrespect is uncanny. She deserves the position. She's been working the position. And I think by about this time, everyone needs to support her. And especially us in here as women, let me tell you something. That's a slap in the face, especially as a woman. We support, we supposed to support each other. Yet and still, when I listen to the board speak, I can hear people talk about 25 things that she's not qualified for, but not man's person speak of one that she's in. She's qualified for. That's disheartening. So today we need to put her in that seat. And Shasta, I support you. You know, and I just hope the board understands that. I think you do a lovely job. And regardless to people saying experience, again, Ms. Booz, you sat on the Board of Education as well as Carol. However, you didn't have any experience doing that. You could have sat on 25 other boards, but did you sit on the Board of Education? So you had to be taught that position. And again, I think everyone is teachable. She has a great personality. She's friendly. She gets the work done. And like I said, I just enjoy being around her when I'm walking around and, you know, just to have a small conversation. She's very pleasant. And she has a can-do attitude. That's what I love about her. So let's just think about that before we make decisions because she's doing the job. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And one else for the panel would like to address the board. Next, I'm Candace Mishad. 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 Hi. Good evening, Mr. Mishad. Good evening, audience. I am Candace Mishad. I am the Vice President of the Trustee Council. I'm really here before you today. Just first and foremost, thank you all for the work that you do with being on these boards. Right? Um, I know it takes up a lot of time for people to come and do this, and just the commitment for showing up in the ways that you all show up. So thank you so very much. I am here tonight um, a as a person who is also in a role where we are responsible for making sure that we are being fair, that we are acting in an ethical way, and that we are accountable for our actions. I want to shed light on some things that I feel have been happening unfairly or feels a bit retaliatory against uh, a resident of my ward, um, Mr. Doug Matthews. Um, Mr. Matthews, at one point, he was up for the money to be appointed for the seventh board seat. That appointment obviously did not happen, but, but from there, he stayed involved in what's going on in the city. Um, he would come to the council meetings, and he calls it pretty fairly, right? There, there he was no respecter of person in the sense of, um, I'm going to call your name specifically because of this or because of that, or I wasn't, he wasn't choosing sides. There was a meeting that occurred um, in which uh, there were some questionable uh, financial decisions from one of my colleagues. And ever since that meeting, um, my colleague has taken it upon herself to, uh, it, it feels like it's a retaliation. I can't speak to her mindset. I also can't speak to whether or not, you know, the financial thing happened or did not happen. But what I do want to speak to today is that residents should not fear for their safety coming to meetings, 
residents should not be retaliated against. Residents should not be called names and accused of things um, that they're not doing. We should not, because uh, at the council, we use word, the word weaponize so often. So I want to say that that colleague should Why? not weaponize Somebody her position as a council person. She not, should not weaponize her race as a black woman, and she should oh not weaponize God. her gender as a woman to create false narratives that could put people's lives oh in danger. Um, obviously, there are other audience members who have threatened Mr. Matthews as well. Uh, and again, we can't control the audience and what they do, but what happens is our behavior trickles down to the audience. And so while I do call on my colleague today to certainly maybe change course, because there are a lot of things that are said about me that are not true, that I don't agree with, that I do not like. But what I cannot do is retaliate against members of this community, because they are still members of this community. Regardless if we like what they're saying or how they're saying it, now keep in mind, if my colleague was disrespected, and especially in a, a way that attacked her race or her gender, I would absolutely stand up for that colleague. But we cannot, again, weaponize these things against people. And please believe that just because we are black, it doesn't mean we can't weaponize the current um, social capital that we have with everyone being aware that black people need to be respected. I, I wholeheartedly believe that we are in a good place society-wise as far as black people being able to have a voice. But what we won't, don't want to do is take that voice and begin to marginalize other people in the way that we're marginalized, nor use that voice in a way that when there really is an issue, people will not believe us because we've already used that in a way that it was like, well, that wasn't the issue there, so how do we believe you now? Um, and so again, I'm just here um, on behalf of Doug Matthews today to say that uh, I, I would ask this board to review uh, our meetings, if you've not already, and take a look at some of the actions that have been done toward him by my colleague. And I just really, um, I don't know, take the appropriate steps to maybe make some suggestions as to what happens when a council person is retaliating toward a member of the public because they did not like their point of view. Thank you. Yes, um, public speaker is Mr. Doug Matthew. May I stay seated? Sure. Oh, all right, everyone, my name is Doug Matthews. I'm a retired social worker living in the seventh ward. Today I wish to briefly discuss the core norms essential for any ethical board member, followed by an important example that highlights the necessity of these norms. Ethical governance is the cornerstone of effective leadership, particularly for a body as crucial as the Ethics and Accountability Board. Key norms include, one, professionalism and objectivity. Members must maintain a high degree of professionalism, impartiality, and objectivity in all their dealings. Members must respect diversity. Embracing and respecting diversity in all forms is non-negotiable. It ensures fairness and equity in decision making. Members should focus on the mission. Board members should focus on the board's mission, ensuring that their conduct and decisions align with their primary objective. Public perception and integrity. The conduct of each member, especially in public forums, shapes the perception and integrity of the board. Members must be cautious of their public statements and actions. In the interest of illustrating the importance of these norms, I turn to a recent instance involving a board member, Ms. Carol McIntosh. Her statements on a public platform, which I have described and verified, unfortunately serves as examples of how not to embody these ethical norms. On January 5th, Ms. McIntosh streamed live on Media 810. Ms. McIntosh's remarks on various sensitive topics, including religion, sexuality, and race, frankly, lack the objective, objectivity and professionalism expected of an EAB member. Discussing conspiracy theories and personal opinions in a manner that could be construed as disrespectful to certain groups does not align with the principles of respect and diversity and impartiality. Ms. McIntosh said, and I quote, if you've got enough money, you can touch all of the kids that you want. Thank you, Mr. King. 
She uh, said that black women and children are not the same as the black women. Thank you. Thank you. See, she she said thank you. He said, see, he going to keep going. So he wants to be the eye book. Can he have babies? He wants to be the eye book. Cut your off everybody. I don't mind you coming to me and you can your pay or something. But this is not the board that you're going to come and try to attack it. Thank you. I have a free speech right. I'm not attacking the general right. I'm telling the truth about it. We're not going to get a shot now. Now, either hold it, hold it to, hold it to, to you, to what you have to say, what you see wrong, but don't attack. And I understand why she doesn't want to acknowledge these statements. These statements. Let me have this. All right, I'll continue. I'm, I'm almost done. Do, but don't, don't do an attack. It's not an attack. It's a criticism, a professional sure. criticism. So, sure. while we value free speech and diverse viewpoints, it is imperative that as members of an ethics board, you adhere mm -hmm. to the highest standards of conduct, both in your official capacities and in your public expressions. Okay. Our actions and words must always reflect the ethical standards wow. that we are entrusted to uphold. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. I'm sorry I won't be able to stay for the remainder of the meeting. I don't want to yes, yeah, right here. Uh, went to Paul 810 News Media Group. Before Mr. Matthews leaves the room, maybe Candace Bush, I didn't know, that he attacked one of your colleagues. He attacked uh, everybody. Oh, excuse me, Councilwoman Tanya Burns. He, he went in my Facebook Messenger and he called her Sly Snake Bite Burns. He wanted the letter from an ENA meeting to be sent to him confidential where Clyde Edwards was talking about Miss Little, okay? He said that she wasn't, uh, he, he wanted some information on her. He was gonna be coming out with more letters against the ENA board, okay? Then that following, that following council meeting, he sent Tanya a picture of a snake and then a picture of another snake with a cowboy hat on it addressing her as Sly Snake Bite Burns, old snake bite, the same thing that he sent in my inbox, okay? So while he up here trying to be ethical and hold people accountable, he should check himself. And everybody needed to know that. I couldn't let that slide. That was not necessary. Anyone else like to address the board? Anyone else like to address the board? If not, and the board had opportunity to address uh, the public speaker to comment, and I want to address it. I would like to just um, thank everybody for coming down to uh, um, address your concerns. I uh, appreciate it. Um, enlightening us on what you feel um, and we're taking it into consideration. I also want to thank everyone for coming and speaking with the board and also um, Ms. Martin, I absolutely do and I am 200% in agreement with you and so hopefully you know, something can happen and to speak to you, um, the last speak, speak for the, speak for the, uh, not speak for it, but to address the last speaker, um, if you go back and look at some of the meetings, um, Mr. Matthews was in the audience, and he was also sending kissing sounds towards the uh, councilwoman in the sixth mm -hmm. ward. So we're not going to play that. I'm just going to tell half truth, just to make a story look pleasant for you know us to jump on his side. We're going to look at the whole story. And I think in the future, council people should um, remove themselves from um, community members unless it's something truly, truly they know the information to. I think they should remove themselves from be, for being a, from being a representative or representing their their constituents unless they have the whole truth. So it, it's a lot that go down. Council meeting. I witness. I witness a lot of the things that goes on. I. Um, it, it's just too much. So I, I'm not going to pick a side. But what we're not going to do is sit here 
and try to belittle um, anybody mm -hmm. in this board meeting. Even with my colleague over here, what she do on her time, that's her business. It, whatever she does, that has nothing to do with how her decision that she make on the ethics and accountability board. So we need to stop people from coming in here trying to um, belittle us in the work that we do. And we need to put a stop in people attacking council members. And we need, and when council members come, they need to come to us with the whole truth. They need to come to us with facts. And they need to come to us with um, reliable information so we can make a sound decision. Because all that other stuff ain't even necessary. And I do apologize that you have to sit on that line. No, 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 I'm sorry. So that's, that's where I'm at. Anyone else? Yes, I would like to um, ditto what everyone else has said, our board members have said. We really do appreciate people taking time to come and you know open our eyes up to some things because um but one thing i do want to say is that uh the trend has been the, the attitudes and the trends has been set by city council that's why the public respond the way they do because city council is not in control of themselves and seem like everybody else is picking up that same attitude and spirit of aggression you know, nobody can uh, reason with anyone or want to res expect or uh, respect anyone else's opinion, you know, and that's not how it's supposed to be. And, and in terms of our board, we cannot be ethical and accountable. If we're not um, getting along with each other, we can't, ex you know, we cannot go out and control city council. And city council can't come in and, and, and give us any um, support because we're not working with each other. So in general, there's a lot need to be done. And I think uh, one thing uh, the voters need to really pay attention to who they put in office. Mm -hmm. Because it really is affecting the city real bad. And also, the, we have to be even careful about who we place on boards because people have personal opinions, friendships out here, and it filters over in these boards. You know, I have, I served on many boards, but I have never, ever served on one that has been so, you know, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. We should be focused in on the citizens of the city of Flint, and that's it. You know, all your personal agendas and your personal relationship with people outside the board, uh, should be at bay, you know, you know, because we have to be fair, we have to be clear as to how we may come up with our decisions as well, and we definitely don't want to turn into city council, you know, you put that on record. <laughs> okay. Anyone else want to address? Um, I just want to say thank everybody from the public for coming. I'm so excited to see Miss tonight because I know she's going to have some amazing information for us. I, I, I love her. Um, she was our former officer. So I'm glad to see her. As far as the comments, um, I'm an adult. I do this voluntarily. Okay? And when I make my decisions as it pertains to a complaint, I base it off the charter of the law. And I don't care who you are, I've often said, even if you're my city council person. Okay? Anybody that know anything, know I'm a straight shooter. Okay? You can be my mama. I love you, Mama. Mama could be dead wrong. I'm going to tell the truth on Mama, and then I'm going to take my mom to dinner for a steak. Okay? Because that's my mama. Right or wrong. But if Mama wrong, she wrong. So that straddling the fence and favors, and I don't do that. Okay? That's the only reason I'm here. It's not no money in this for me. Okay? This is free. So there's no reason for me to hang around here and be all over the place and two and three faces. I'm trying to move the city forward. I'm not going to let anybody tell me what I can do on public media that I pay for. Because first of all, I'm an American and a taxpaying citizen, okay? And I have a right to freedom of speech. And I love everybody. And the issues of the world are the issues of the world. And I'm not going to be scared to address them because a couple of people who think they big wigs or want to aspire to be big wigs, who's torn down everybody, 
and personal attacks come and attack me and shut me down. I will be on 18 because I have an agreement with 18 and 1420. So that's where I'll be. Now, if somebody don't want to allow me to donate my time for free on these boards, I respect that. Okay? And if at any point in time, the residents, I'm talking about the residents, because all these other people who got their own agendas, what they feel about me is not important. I'm not here for you, and I'm not here for public opinion. Anybody that know me know I'm very secure with Kira, whether you like me or not. So I'm not big on that. I'm all about the service that I do for the community. And I'm steady getting calls about complaints all the time. And anybody that know me know when the city council called me with their issues, the first thing I say is they govern themselves or go to the police. I don't jump up at city council with all that. But if you come pretending like there's no dirt on your hands, and I know you've been making mud pies. I don't care what your title is. I'm going to speak on it. I'm, no, I'm not going to be a coward for anybody to hold any position on any board. I serve a much higher authority than anybody in this room and anybody in this city. And that's the principle I'm going to live by and walk by. I'm not going to do nothing different. So if anybody want to remove me because of that, do your thing. That's all I got to say. I'm going to try to be smooth. But I just wanted to say that. I'm sorry. Anyone else I want to address this? But if, if not, let me say before we move on. And I, what, if we all are public, what we, what we show also public feed off. We do have. Commitment to represent this board. What, what we do, what we do outside of what we say, whether we like it or not, it reflects back to the board. It reflects back to how we're going to be able to make a decision. We cannot cure it to the one else because we are committed to say type of conduct. It's just, we just can't do it. This, this, this board is for the citizens. We represent the residents of the, of the city of Atlanta. And we have to act accordingly. Uh, so let's, let's uh, remember that we got a higher standard than anyone we have to set by ourselves. Even how the council comes on the jury. So, it, it, whether we whether we like it or not, we, we accept this position at the end, and we had to treat it like what it is. Not, and there's a lot of things that I don't want to, and I won't say or do. I want to say or do, but it reflects back to here, and I would not do anything to try to at this point disrespect the residents. Instead of man, I don't care about all the fun stuff. And with that, we're going to move on to my open remarks. I just gave them. Uh, I'm not going to fill a lot of time on those today. I'm going to move on to the next thing on the agenda. We're going to review 10 and approve the agenda for today. I know that the very next one was supposed to read Thursday. So that would be a correction. What did you say? I'm sorry. Uh, you can't hear what he's saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Just say, speak up. I don't have a problem. I would obtain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. I can move a proper second to approve the change of the 
Do you have a number of changes? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Next item on the agenda is to review and approve other minutes from last meeting, and we don't have a complete minutes. Ms. Hill was playing. Um, due to the detail of the meeting, and as we all know, we had people come in at various times because of the location of the meetings. This is quite um, a transcript, mm -hmm. so there's a few items that are left off of it. I worked up on it and the back of the end of it until I walked through this door. Mm -hmm. So that information will be provided. I will either, either if you all decide you want it the next meeting, if you want to email to you. I just tried to get the, um, the, the, the bulk of the facts and the statements that were coming in from the council meeting and our, the council members, excuse me, in the response that was given. So that's why um, when you say when you see on the minutes, it's a half of the minutes because I got about three more pages, mm -hmm. right and back. Did you see this front and back? It was a long meeting. Was a long meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, like when I read uh, the first paragraph that you wrote, mm -hmm. where the individual said you put she started. Can you make sure that whatever she said you put, put in parentheses? Yes. Thank you. Only because mm -hmm. I don't, you know, that that's is somebody's opinion and that's what they say. Yeah, what I'm doing is direct quote. Here you go. What I'm doing is direct quote, I do, but on some of it, when I listen to it, I have to put it in my own words because I'll be saying cuss words and a lot of different things. So the some of them I try to put it, you know, if it's a direct quote, mm -hmm. I try to put it in quotation. But even if it's a final language, you should put it in. Okay. Because then you're giving you the, know, true, yeah, the true representation. You can't sugarcoat what, you know, the truth. Okay. So please. All right. Okay, I don't really have much to, I, I do have something to add, that mm -hmm. um, the last meeting, I told you all about um, the training that I was seeking for myself, mm -hmm. for the bus person's office, and I'm um, glad to announce that finance agreed to reimburse me for those classes and any further training will be, the administration had to approve it. When I went to the director of finance and I have been reimbursed in my, all my other future trainings that they would be paying for. And the fabulous thing is I'm going to throw this out there because remember I, you was asking why did I pay for it myself? Right. Because when you register with a lot of them, you need the fee card. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been even, they have even found a way that I can use their department's fee card to move mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Thank God somebody is helping this office get out of here. And that's, that's all I have. Yes. Yeah. The CFO, I went to the CFO and Vicky Foster, and they pushed things through for me, and they made sure that I was issued a reimbursement. And Albert is already has been made. But you have to pay in advance. When you when you register for any of them, they ask for your payment then. Okay. Um. So by the time you send a PO, mm -hmm. like for instance, if I send a purchase order, mm -hmm. you might lose your spot. Mm -hmm. You know, you can register for it, and they'll, they'll send you an email and say, okay, you need to pay this, that's why I did. Mm -hmm. Because, see, you'll lose the spot, because I missed the first section, mm -hmm. because you get this four dollars. Mm -hmm. So you'll lose your spot, mm -hmm. and you will end up going to March or April, and I didn't want that to happen, but they corrected it. Okay. Online classes? Some of them online, you can go to some, but this first session is online. Mm -hmm. 
I just want to say this to the public, and we all know this. Even if you buy stuff off T Moo and Amazon, you gotta pay some. Ain't nothing free, and that includes ain't nothing free for this office and this shaft. And her office is not funded, okay? It's funded, but she can't get to funds. So that equals the same thing. She can't operate. So if she wants to operate efficiently, she's been operating out of her car. So I just wanted to put that out there, you know, because there's been a lot of talk about her inability to do the job. And I think when you go the extra mile and fund a city department so that it can stay alive, how are you not the most qualified person for the job? I just don't understand it, but... Anyway, thank I'm so glad you got this. Because I, I know we've been fighting to get you those funds for a long time. Yeah. So I'm just glad. And we're going to move on. We might go on another time to prove it. But we will see. Mr. 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 Julia. <laughs> so uh, I'm not, I want to ask her about something. Did you, did you, uh, you said the, uh, email yeah. about the, the posting. Is it, uh, it's not uh, possible for you to do that. For the uh, positions that we were looking No, I still yeah. haven't, they still haven't given me authority yeah. to post positions. Uh -huh. I contact us via email through HR, they'll call back, you know, because of course I'm going to leave my, well, they want you know, I, I requested this information. They'll say, um, okay, let me talk to this person, this person, or they'll just say, okay. And it hasn't been posted. <laughs>
was drama field. Um, it was right in the midst of political turmoil, I will say. Um, and somehow I got kind of swept up in there all the way from Columbus, Ohio. So <laughs> I am no stranger to um, things that you know take place in the city and um, you know those adversarial relationships that that um, you know get stirred up just you know out of we don't even know people you know and it kind of get we, we kind of you know someone says one thing and now we're running with it and you know it's kind of reminiscent of, of what took place during public comment where we have one person who feels some type of way who has a particular sentiment towards another person and they say well this person does x y and z and now to everyone in the room who doesn't know that person we can say oh well this person did that and now i'm going to run with it and now i'm going to tell 10 other people about this person and that is the kind of environment and the culture that we've created here in the city of Flint. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately we're at a moment where people can't take time to sit down and say let me get to know you um during my appointment i had the wonderful opportunity to do that you know and um prior to her letter coming on board um, in the black position, you know, I, I told her after she came, like, I didn't even know black had staff, you know, because <laughs> I've never seen them, you know, and so, and, and we, we started, you know, it was, it was some of that, you know, the, the, the East versus the West Coast, you know, and, and, you know, but you know what we did? When she came in that position, I said, nah, because that's not how I do I don't do that. I'm not going to sit back and talk about somebody behind their back or such and such, I might be so I don't like her. When she came to, to City Hall, I went right to that office and said, come on. We gonna talk, you know, and great relationship. I, I give her her kudos because Blight is one is one thing while I was there that I saw a, a, just a drastic improvement in. So I'm gonna definitely give her her kudos. Um, but we we need more of that, you know. And for her to come here and advocate on behalf of Shaxa is another telling moment that um, you know relationship building, being a Muslim is is relationship building. You know, as as a Muslim classical, we don't have enforcement power. We don't have the ability to say, okay, Mr. Patrick Julian, I don't like that yellow shirt, you need to make it blue tomorrow. You know, we, we don't have the ability to do it. I love blue, make it blue, go blue. So, <laughs> um, you know, so we, our, our power comes from our ability to investigate. Our power comes from our ability to build relationships and speak to people and get to know people and say, hey, this person is having an issue with this. Can we talk about it? Like, what do you think about that? That's crazy, right? Like, don't you think that, what can we do for this person? You know, so building those relationships and helping them to understand that one, you know, it is not my goal to have an adversarial relationship. You know, it's not my goal. I, as a Muslim, I am not the finger pointer to catch you with your hands in the cookie jar. My goal is to bridge the gap between the public and between government. My goal is to help people understand that they have a voice that can be heard. And so many times, you know, we think in our own lives, and we go, I got caught in raise my taxes. What do I do now? Oh, man, I got to sit on hold. They don't answer the phone. What, you know, all these issues that we have as everyday citizens. You know, and, and that is what this role is for, is to help people have an avenue. I would tell people all the time, I can't guarantee an outcome. I can't guarantee she's that the, what you are looking for is going to happen, but I can guarantee you I'll look into it. I can guarantee that when you call, you'll get an answer. I can guarantee that you will have someone that will look at what happened to you and look at the policy and try to determine if there has been any violations. Exactly. In many instances, there weren't violations. However, there still are opportunities to bring those issues to government and say, hey, you know, um, one such issue was with the water bills, you know, when they were switching out those water meters and folks were getting $5,000, $6,000 bills. Technically, is that what the meter read? It absolutely did. So clearly some water got used somewhere. But is it fair? Is it right? What can we do as a city to ensure that some of our hardest hit populations don't get the water shut off for a bill that they are never going to be able to pay? What can we do for that? Um, and so those are the types of things that, um, you know, as I'm buzzing you know, person, I'm buzzing is gender neutral, so I, will, I, often, I always use I'm buzzing. So those are the types of things that we look into to try and help citizens. Um, like Mr. King was saying, with the Ethics and Accountability Board, this board is situated so differently than mo any other board across the country. And by nature, it situates the ombudsman differently. Most ombudsmen 
do not have any type of political ability. I actually yeah. prefer not to. <laughs> right. I am not a, I, I am not a political person by nature. I you know, I sometimes say stuff that I probably shouldn't say and I'm like, oh I shouldn't say that like with the yellow shark. I probably shouldn't use that example. <laughs> but, you know, but but that's just an example. What if he took offense to it? You know, what if he what if he's like oh, Sure, you know, and so that's why I'm not a politician. <laughs> um, and so with that, like, I met with the um, Charter Review Commission um, when I first got into this role, just to get an idea of what they were thinking when they made this situation. What, what, what was your goal? What was your hope? Um, and the one thing that they said was that this board um, would be the political buffer for the ambassador. Um, and I can say that during my tenure, that is what you all absolutely were. You absolutely were the political buffer for me because boy, they tried to pull me in the storm. And um, I think that it is, it was helpful for me. It allowed me to stay confident. It allowed me to do what I needed to do. And it allowed me to make decisions and bring it to the board and if the board agree, great. If not, then maybe we need to go back to the drawing board. Um, and that is, that's, that is uh, appropriate um, dialogues and conversations and we're not gonna always agree and you know, all of that, those good things. But I can say with what I was shadowing up about, I always felt like I was supported from this board. And that is what Shaxa will need in this position as interim. I'll say when she is appointed a husband because I have the utmost um, belief in her abilities. Mm -hmm. I believe wholeheartedly, I know wholeheartedly that um, integrity without a doubt, ability without a doubt, dedication without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sorry, I would not be in this role as interim for 16 months. Mm -hmm. um, so the dedication that she's shown, mm -hmm. you cannot teach that. You cannot teach integrity. Um, Budsman, she can call me anytime. I, I will be getting to you all a, a proposal. Um, I that that part can be taught. The training that she has signed up for, it will be absolutely amazing for her. Not only the training, but the connections that she will make. Um, there are there's a whole association of Muslims across the country and worldwide, quite honestly, that will support her and back her up with any questions that she has. And that was one of the things that I did when I was in this world. I was trying to find some other ombudsman that was so politically involved as, as this position was in the beginning. Because towards the end, it was my goal to pull myself away from that to get back to what I was there to do. And I was there to answer the calls from the, from the gentleman whose roof was caved in because of the city house next door. That's what I was there for. I wasn't there for right. all the craziness. Mm -hmm. I, 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 first of all, I couldn't stay up that late to watch those city council meetings. So, so I, you know, I, I, I started to pull myself back to what I was there for. And that's what I am going to say in, in for Shaxa is that she absolutely needs your support. She needs your support. I was privy to the letter that was written by the administration, which was extremely, extremely inappropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In no way, shape, or form would that letter have been written if I was still in this position. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because they would absolutely know that you put these mistruths in this letter, it will be told. You all will know that this is untrue. And that letter was untrue. Because they know for a fact that 16 months ago when I was in that position, I struggled to get appointments to the Human Relations Commission. Mm -hmm. I struggled to get appointments from the mayor. Mm -hmm. And I struggled to get appointments from members of city council. Tell it tonight, tell it. Uh, the clerk's office should be able to verify that. The council person should be able to verify that. And the administration should be able to verify that because they were all on those emails. So to say that now there's a there is a problem is, is false. And it is spreading lies mm -hmm. and it is bullying. Mm -hmm. The same fashion of her not being allowed to spend money, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I had a key card. Mm-hmm. I spent money. Mm-hmm. My purchases do not get approved by anyone but me. Mm-hmm. I am the young person. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, in that sense, for her to have to go to anyone what? to spend her budget is a problem. She needs to be. So she needs to be embodied to be able to make these decisions. She needs to be embodied to say, after this meeting, Friday, when she goes to City Hall, her first stop should be HR saying, when are these positions getting posted? That should be the first step. When are my positions getting posted? Because I expect to receive by Monday. This is the job description. This is how long I like them posted. And this is, and I expect to see it on Monday. She has the ability, and she has been appointed interim. She has full ombudsman abilities. No, she doesn't. She should, yes. So she, yes. She, she absolutely should, and that is the tenet of an ombudsman. An ombudsman has to be removed. She, she, shouldn't ha- she does not have to get things approved because she should be removed from the day-to-day operations of the city of Atlanta. She can't be involved in issues regarding the city of Flint if she's going to be impartial, if she's going to be removed, she's not governed by the same um, rules and regulations that uh, the water department would be. Or, you know, that, that, that it's, it, it is, there's a reason why she's situated differently. There's a reason why she's not appointed by the mayor or hired by the city council or any of those things. She's hired and appointed, the ombudsman is hired and appointed by you all. So the city of Flint has no bearing on what who she hires, what she does. I've been saying that. This is her thing, like her office. She's going to live up and down. So I I definitely wanted to to convey that. I wanted to to get that across that she needs to be empowered. Mm -hmm. If the board is going to make a decision, whatever decision, you know, it is your decision to make who you want to appoint as an ombudsman. I know who I want you to appoint as an ombudsman. So, <laughs> I will say, you know, take those things into consideration. Um, like I said, I mean, learning to be an ombudsman is, is something that you learn through working. You learn by going to trainings. You learn, you know, you learn how to accept the formal investigation. You learn how to write up a report. You learn the words to use, like, it appears that, and, um, you know, circumstantial, and there does not appear to be enough evidence to support your allegation. You know, you learn those catchphrases as you go through, but integrity, you cannot learn. Commitment, you cannot learn. And so I, I, I just implore you all to, to keep that in mind. Um, but then also keep in mind that you all are the buffer for her. And so if any department or individual or anyone is allowed to uh, disparage her, to bully her, that is why you all are a body. And she's just one. Because she's going to make a decision that someone is not going to like. She's going to absolutely do something that someone is not going to like. But as a body, you all have the ability to collectively vote and determine if something is, you know, if, you know, I mean, and in, in, in speaking about ethics, um, you know, it's not just about what I think is right or wrong. It's about what society says as a whole. What is collectively agreed upon that is unethical behavior? You know, and it, and it changes. You know, at one point, we would all drink at work. And it was completely acceptable. No, I'm not doing that. You might get fired. You know, and so those types of things do change, and that's why you have a body that can collectively decide what do we feel as a whole is appropriate or inappropriate. But it's not for her to do because she is only one person, and she will be the attack person. She is right now the person being attacked. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you don't want like, anyone in that role. Like, just you all are her support. And I, I will say, I, I, I put a couple things. I'm kind of straight off, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes as things are going on. Um, so I touched on the letter, um, the climate that the things are in. Um, 
her ability, like her budget is hers. She needs to be able to spend it. Um, some things about what an ombudsman does not do. Um, so an ombudsman does not judge guilt or innocence. Um, I know a lot of times, especially in this city, where we want someone to be guilty, we want so bad for them to be wrong, that is not her job. Her job isn't to say who's right or wrong. Um, ombudsmen don't participate in grievances or appeal processes. Um, they uh, don't serve in any other role, which will compromise neutrality. Um, so I will say she needs to get an assistant hire like ASAP because she really should not be doing you all in minutes. Um, <laughs> so and I, and so I she's going to need, she needs a staff very, like, yesterday. Um, I mean, even for myself in my role, like, there, I, I, I usually didn't watch city council meetings because I don't need to have an opinion mm -hmm. on, a, on a particular person. I don't need to have a personal opinion. Right. And so... And not being involved in that, I can't form one. Only thing on my own, they are a blank slate to me. And so I would say the same that there, you know, things, it makes it difficult to remove yourself if you are in the middle of it. And you all, whether you like it or not, are in the middle of it because that's what you all agreed to do. <laughs> but you all are a body. And so it's a lot easier for a body to be in the middle of it than just one person. Um, so I will say definitely, you know, that the staffing needs to be a, a priority. And you all have the ability to put that pressure on the administration that, you know, there are needs that this ombudsman has that she's not getting. I will say one thing, when I, went, when I didn't get my office, uh, MY wanted to interview me and I absolutely took that opportunity. No. And I let them sit in my one room office next to everybody else that could hear everything that was going on and let them see, you know, I'm really struggling to get office. I got office the next day. So, <laughs> so I just, you know, that, that was, that was, you know, um, that is the power that you all have. The voice. The voice. Yes. You all have the ability to say, I can't say you must do X, Y, and Z. But guess what? I can bring it up in the court of public opinion. And I could say, this is what's happening. And now, if you think it's right, then stand on it, you know? Mm -hmm. But if it's not, then do something about it. And that is where we have our most power from. That's where we get our most gains from. It's just putting it back in the lap of the government. This is what the situation is. Do something with it. We hope that you do the right thing. Sometimes they don't, and you might have to be a little more aggressive. But ultimately, the goal is to get the, the body to do what's right without having to go to court, without having to make a spectacle, without having to do all of these things that are kind of happening right now. We want to try to avoid that. Um, and then lastly, I will say for... Um, both the EAD as well as the ombudsman process, we want to make sure that it's formal. Any grievances that a person wants to file, any issues that a person has, there needs to be a clear understanding that it should be a formal process. Yes. If you want to submit a complaint, submit it formally. Thank you. There will be a, there, you know, that could even be a disclaimer that, you know, issues brought up during public comment. Yeah. Issues brought up randomly while you see Shaxa walking down the street, walking her dog. That's not a formal complaint. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot do anything with that. Exactly. I need you to submit it formally. And I, and I believe that that um, will help with some of the, the things like we saw today where we just want to, someone has to be wrong. And I want everyone to hear me saying that this person is wrong. Um, we can all have our opinions, and that's fine. You know, that is our right. That is our right as citizens, you know, to, to voice our grievances. However, there are appropriate ways to do that. Um, and it's not necessarily in a setting where it's not going to be investigated. So, you know, having that um, formal policy of when and where uh, complaints can be filed, um, I think would be extremely beneficial. Um, I know the one, the, one of the things that I was working on was getting the rules for the ombudsman's office um, set in stone. And, and those are things that you can put in the ombudsman rules, you know, about when and where complaints can be filed. But it's also something that you all can put in your rules about, you know, what, what constitutes a formal complaint. 
Um, speaking of rules, uh, that was the, one of the first things that I worked on mm -hmm. when I was on Busman was mm -hmm. city council rules. Um, you know, what, uh, one of our famed council members had been removed from office, um, and there was a question of whether or not that was um, violated the charter. Um, I did look into that. I, sh I shouldn't have had to, <laughs> but like I said, because this office is situated differently, this board is situated differently, it is something that I looked into. Um, and I presented it to the board. And while the charter is not specific, it does give council the um, ability to discipline its members. Mm -hmm. My recommendation was that council update its rules. Mm -hmm. if, if they wanted to do X, Y, and Z, just put it in writing. Mm -hmm. Because things in writing are they're so much clean, it's so clean, much mm -hmm. cleaner. If I had it in writing, if I had it in the mm -hmm. rules, it's the rule, you know the rules, they know the rules, yeah. we all know the rules. Get them, yeah. And so that was one of the things that you know I worked on here and you know presented it to the board. And it, it's, it seems like we're still at that place where we're having issues with what are the rules, what's going on, you know, how do we, what, what's discipline, what's too much, what's not enough. It is, you know, being litigated, and so the court has the final say on that. Um, but I will say, like, as this board, when you all are looking into these issues, um, it, it gets so distracting with all the noise and all mm -hmm. the, the um, people who have personal, mm -hmm. emotional responses mm -hmm. to these things. So I will implore you all that as ethics professionals, you do have to remember that the emotion has to stay out of it. We are here <clears throat> to look at the situation as a collective, as a whole, and there are, there were, and I'm sure there are, constant, constant pressures to try to drag the emotion into it, into this body. I am so happy to see people here because when I was here, we didn't get nobody to come. So <laughs> I am happy to see people here, but I, um, it's a little disheartening that, you know, from what it appears that there are some attempts to turn it into kind of a circus. Mini circus, mini, you know, let's, let's uh, replicate, you know, other meetings. Um, so I'll say kudos to you all for, for growing this board, growing participation. Um, but just keep with what you all have always done. And that is being supportive of the Office of the Mother's Person, that is being um, neutral, impartial, and, and just stay on that course. Stay on that course of. of of looking at the facts and, and being one board and one body. Because whether you all know it or not, that is that will be the most important thing for you all to be one body. And with that, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Dawson. Uh, shouldn't be doing and you know I think that as a help 
um, to where you all can know how to best support this mm -hmm. role in this position um, because it is, it's a lot different. I mean, it's different from historically what the ombudsman was, you know, even before I came. I mean, because the office had been closed down for what, 10 years? Um, so we, ha I mean, we have, a, we have a long history of having ombudsman in our city, um, but I think, it, you know, it, it, the ombudsman as it was was a little bit different than I think the needs of our community are right now. Um, the ombudsman has previously did a lot of stuff with police. Um, a lot of stuff with police. And unfortunately, there was not the best relationship between some previous ombudsmen and the police department and, you know, some other departments. And um, when I came on board, that's just not necessarily how I work. Um, I work best with, you know, communication and um, trying to build those relationships, and so that was one of the things that I did. You know, I met with the police chiefs, and um, I met with the police chiefs all around Genesee County, actually. Um, and so, uh, you know, the complaints that she did may be different now than were post-COVID, you know? So it, the, the types of complaints and the issues kind of change, but our general work um, and general direction should stay the same. Um, and the focus will always be the citizens. And not necessarily, an ombudsman is not an advocate. That is what one misconception. Um, her job is, to not, is not to advocate for a person. Her job is to look at the facts and, and see if there has been a violation. Um, so she will neither advocate for the citizen, nor will she advocate for the gov government. She will look at the facts and determine if there's something there. Um, and so that is one thing, you know, we would get complaints from, from saying, well, you all are doing okay, you know, you know, and I'm, I'm my, you know, I, I cannot guarantee, you know, anything, you know, and, and that may upset people sometimes when you, you know, they have a $600 water bill and you can't get it paid. Um, they're upset and you aren't doing your job because you didn't get a water bill paid. Um, and she can't get know that. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, that also to, you know, bear in mind that she is not an advocate. You know, she can advocate if there is something wrong, <laughs> but her job is not solely as an advocate to get the person what they want. Her job is to ensure good government, and, and that's all we really want to do in this role, is just make sure that we have good government. I want to thank you for your comments. That was uh, very well put. I'm new to the board, but I'm not new to and um, I, this is my third meeting. Just listening to the rhetoric in the community, I mean, everywhere I go, since people know, you know I'm on this board, they want to chit chat here and chit chat there, and I'm, my phone's ringing and asking me this and asking me that. And one thing that I vowed to do was to be, keep it real, okay? When you're on a board of this stature, on this platform, you yourself have to show that you are part of an ethic and accountability board, which means that the changes that you want to put in place, you want to be an advocate for those changes. Not to go all out of the community, talking this rhetoric, talking about this and talking about that. Keep it in the room. Keep it here. Keep it on this table. Let us work together to create different outcomes instead of being in the community saying things that are just, not, a lot of times they're untrue, you know, and a lot of times people just speak off the cuff. And you gotta have facts. You can't just speak without facts. And I know there are a lot of little, you know, little media things out here, people saying things, and they're not all the time true, but it, it's getting to be a little monotonous for, to sit in this seat and sit next to people and with people who I thought wanted to be part of an ethic and accountability board. So that's an issue. You know, if you're going to be on a board, you would see, you should have that. That should be your focus, to help make things better, not keep up the red BS. I'm just saying it like that going. So I look at it like, you know, I sit and I take notes and I listen to people and I try and, you know, I don't watch the council meetings anymore. I used to. 
you know, got past my bedtime. And I don't go downtown anymore. I used to. But I want to keep my opinion, um, I want to keep it separated from what is the norm, as they're saying nowadays. We have to do better. we got to move this city forward. we got to put our best foot forward to do what's right. And that is to work together as a group to make some changes. So that's what I thought the board was all about, making changes. So we're not making changes if we're going to continue to spread untruths or spread your opinion, you know. It's just not it's just not good. It's just not good. And I don't you know, I don't care what people say, I don't care, you know, I don't read the, the comments in online and all of that. It's it's you know, that's we need to but what I'd like to do is do something in this room to move forward. It's been three meetings. We've been talking about the ombudsman. We have done nothing to move this job forward. So I think it's time for us to move, put, you know, put the pen to the paper, and let's get it done. If the person gets a, selected for the job and they don't do well, there's repercussions, correct? But if they do well, then we've made good decisions. So I think it's time for us to move forward now. Three meetings, nothing. We haven't done anything. And it's time for an ombudsman. I remember when Daryl Buchanan was in, I think he's the last one, but there was a guy before him. Terry Barker. Right, there you go. I think they were that name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then... Uh, there was another one too, but they didn't stay long. I think they quit. But at any rate, it's time for her. Okay, it's her time. And I think us as a board need to come together and look at the facts and let's just do it so we can move on to something else. This is three meetings that we have not done anything constructive. So, anyway, and again, that's my opinion. I'm not going to take it to the radio station, I'm not going to take it to Facebook, but I'm taking it right to the show. Oh, Mr. King. As you know, Mr. King, I just have one little question for Ms. Dorsey. Do you mind? It's just something simple. I'm wow. just trying to put thinking. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying if a complaint comes into Shaft to the ombudsman, she takes a complaint and she moves it after she does her investigation, or does the EAB board do the investigation? So, the way that I handle it, if I felt that it was a complaint that falls under the jurisdiction of the ombudsman, then I would investigate. Um, if it is a complaint that is best served by the body, I would move it up to the body without investigation. Okay. And I would allow the board to do the investigation on the complaint. Mm -hmm. And then they they make the final decision as to what should happen mm -hmm. or their recommendation. Yeah. Do it come do it's but it's not a re recommendation back to the ombudsman, right? It goes to it will go to the entity, and so if okay. the board, you know, as a collective, um, agree that there was some violation of ethics, um, or um, namely for a lot of the city council complaints, because those are not necessarily procedural complaints, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ombudsman will deal with complaints of policy, mm -hmm. complaints of procedure. Um, the way I kind of settled it in my mind was that the board would look at complaints of, of the charter, complaints of um, this is not being ethically followed, um, the, the number of appointees to ex-board um, is in violation of the she charter, and that is something that the Ethics and Accountability Board not this one. should look into, um, because it is a political argument. Um, and she wants, she should be as far removed from the politics that as possible. Right here. So mm -hmm. if it comes in as the, um, a council, anything like that, that removes her because she's not political, correct? Mm -hmm. So then it goes and they make their recommendation and their own investigation. Mm -hmm. So should they have investigations, an uh, investigator and like a secretary to... Thank you for bringing it up because mm -hmm. I was supposed to. When we left off um, with the board, we had the training, and where we left off was that you all really need a budget. Yeah. <laughs> because one, you need an EAD director, 
yeah. and you need some assistance. As a busman, I was helping with investigations, and so if there was a person that needed to be interviewed, I would interview them, or if there was, you know, something that needed to be collected, I was assisting with that, but ultimately, I was collecting that just to give it to the board, for the board to make a decision on, um, and that is, I learned that from the first thing that I did with the council person, where I made a recommendation, and now it was my recommendation, and my, you know, mm -hmm. well, really, I was making a recommendation to the board, mm -hmm that this is what I saw and this is what, you know, I think needs to happen. Um, but it was construed in the public as, well, you made it. That I made a recommendation so, and I like this person and I don't like that person. And all of that came from me just saying council should update their rules. So, 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 so moving forward, all recommendations so. should be handled not from the ombudsman. Mm -hmm. Once she receives a complaint, it should go in terms of anything have to do with Council or anything like that. Oh, the, those, yes, those EAB, complaints. I, I they see investigate them. on their own. They make their own recommendation. Mm -hmm. So that leaves her non-political, mm -hmm. astute. I mean, involved, correct? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because that even, makes sense. I mean, even if we all agree in this room that something happened wrong that shouldn't have happened, if you have one person that has now put it in writing, it is her. Mm -hmm. She did it. But as a board. You are absolutely right. We voted, and out of 12 members, 10 of us agreed that that was wrong and that this is our recommendation. Mm -hmm. So we are one board, we are one body, and we as a collective make this recommendation. So basically what you're saying then, the ombudsman and her office should operate as one in terms of her own budget, and the EAB board should operate as their own entity as well. They, they With are their own... But they, the EAB absolutely needs a budget. Okay. You all absolutely Mr. King, need a budget. I have a question for the um, vice president. Um, are you going to feel obliged? Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, it's so good to see you. I remember when you first started. I remember when you first started. <laughs> she was the one that helped me get my office. She took me to the 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 store, the uh, the furniture store. Yeah, she was like. This is ridiculous. I mean, and I mean, it was it was rough. It was rough, and like I said, I mean, we started off rough. It was a lot of political stuff. But Councilwoman Burns, she was not Councilwoman Burns then, but I was going to give her respect. She took me, um, and she, you know, worked for the administration, you know, but she took me and said, "We're going to go get you some furniture. We're going to find you an office." So definitely a, a, a big help in the the starting of the office because I tell you, I, I had an old typewriter desk and I was in a closet mm -hmm. inside of another office, inside of another department's office. So. Yeah. My, my question, if you want to speak to the board, in case we do have clarity, we still have a problem and we should not be appointing anyone to any board. And that was per basically, when we had spoken to Attorney Kim, our boundaries aren't correct. Our boundaries, oh. we don't know right now <laughs> if we appoint. Because of the redistricting. The re so they still okay. the past two years. Okay. So we're appointing someone now, and now we have to wait. Um, there may be a lawsuit because there are recalls oh. that they're saying upstate, because technically my boundaries would cover uh, Ward 6, 2, 5, and 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's like a third of Flint. Mm -hmm. And so what we should do now is to reflect. And yes, it is high. It has always been higher. People because the boards aren't paid mm -hmm. in the times that they meet. So that has been a consistent uh, issue. And it's an issue even for myself and other members. I think we don't even have anyone from the fourth board on this board. And I don't think we have. And so that remains a problem. And it's a further problem because our boundaries are not correct. And people can start to look forward to new voting cards will come out. Precincts are changing along with... Um, your board will go back on those. So we don't know really what we serve when we were told to serve everyone. That That's a bit much. <laughs> so I am not appointing, appointing anyone until they figure out, which they said it may, you know, if we get a, a definitive answer from the state of Michigan um, and from the state of board of elections, what the boundaries are. Because if we get someone that, for me, it would be someone in the eighth board who would still be now in the second or the fifth board. That's not fair because that person doesn't live in that area who would be representing them, and so it would be doing them a disservice. So there are a lot of things that, um, when it comes to appointing the boards, 
that's just the that's people don't want to and then COVID. People don't want to be in small rooms with COVID. That is one of the biggest things that we hear that people don't want to sit close to people anymore. So some of the problems, um, they're out your hands. And I know you had had a tough time getting down to a parking spot. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. and a key card mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. helping you and, and your issues as um, the ombuds woman to get those basic things to function, which does create stress to even function. And that's where we have to say, when we hear, I don't know Ms. Frieda's last name, um, that we should be neutral, but everyone is not neutral. When we talk about how we function as a government, we have to set aside um, our differences. And mine was very different because I was clearly on the administration side, but saw the great need that the city could not function. And you were having, it was difficult. It, it was, it was, it was impossible for you to function. And, and for this board, as many issues as you come, and I want to apologize for any colleagues. This should not be a griping session. Mm -hmm. That it should not be. This, if they got issues with council, this should not be where you come to gripe about it because there's so many other issues that residents have. And to, for your job to function, for the board to function, we're going to have to take some of the emotional parts out of it. Um, and city council, we had to fix our own problems to come tell the board mm -hmm. about fixing mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to mind our own business. And, and, and I do, I'm serious, behind our own business, and what can we do to help this board to be more neutral and to function at its uh, fullest capacity so that we do have engagement from the public and that you support and show them and say, hey, you took the function, you need a staff, you need a secretary, she should not be doing the minutes, you need a peak hour, you know, you need to be able to have bottled water because you can't drink the city water. Right. Right. Okay, yeah, okay, that's how I come out that budget. We can't use much water. Right, right. right. Council should not come. This is my third meeting. In every meeting, a council person has come to talk about another council person. I, now, do you agree that that is not our job? I, in, my, in my personal opinion, uh, I feel it is, I think it's hard for your board to judge, because it's no it's no secret. People in that council don't like each other. That's just not going to change. And it's been that way for a while. It's been that way for 10 I years. I mean, you know, yeah. it's not a price. And so we I still think, are voting the same type of people, personally. Well, I, I don't think they're voting the same type of people. Because I, I, I think, and I, 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 will, I can selectively say when I see some of the things, I may not agree with them with some things fundamentally. But I think that when we talk about um, how they get along, we do not know how to, a uh, many on that, that council, how to communicate. Mm -hmm. And but my question was, do you feel as though this well, is a platform for council people to come and discuss? Each other? I was interrupted by Ms. Booth. Oh, so I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> but I was going to get back to it because she, I did allow her to speak and uh -huh. ask the question. So do I feel it's appropriate? With some of the stuff, uh, no, we have a parliamentarian coming up, and I have stated we need team building. I've said that for two years. We need team building so we can learn how to do our own issues ourselves. And I'm still for that. Um, I do know with the recall, that's probably going to change. And so we're getting parliamentarian. That was not, we didn't, it wasn't voted on because Council on Judy Priestley broke form. So it'll come back up on another uh, agenda. But we have to learn how to solve our own problems mm -hmm. from the end. Mm -hmm. And this should not be um, a session to where it is, unless it's something charter. And when I have come, I'm speaking specifically to the charter. It's not, I don't like it because you work with dress. It, it's, it's not that. I, I don't do that. I did, my last time I came here and spoke, because I feel that this office has to be, and this board, it has to be neutral. This board is separate from any decision, so that any resident or any person can come here and feel that they have been done justice. And so that this board has a responsibility to be neutral. It has been neutral, you know, in the past, right. but it's not functioning its capacity. I don't like you for something and all of a sudden, some of that is ridiculous. It's like tattletale. Mm -hmm. You know, if, it's, if we're breaking the charter, say, for instance, I had the issue with I sent in a complaint about, it was in our ethics section, I think 1 801, taking checks or gifts. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to bring that to the charter. But just because I don't like it, it's not a charter issue, then no. Mm -hmm. It should not be used. It has to be, as the buzz, um, buzz, prior on Buzz one would say, it should be charter. And I mm -hmm. always state charter, mm -hmm. not hearsay. Mm -hmm. It's always charter, mm -hmm. not hearsay. So this should not be a platform? Not unless it's charter. Unless it's charter. That, correct. Right. I think that even goes back to, sorry, even goes back to putting it in your rules about how a complaint should be filed. 
title, if right. you want to submit, you know, a council person, if they want to submit that's a complaint, submit right. a complaint, but right. submit that's it formally right. and right. the correct right. evidence. Right. It's, and that's what I was going to say right there, and that's what I've been trying to explain. This board has allowed this, because when Ms. Dorsey was here, you couldn't come in here and talk about nobody personally. You had to file a complaint. If you weren't talking about a complaint, you could get up public speaking to speak to a complaint. But far as just dragging somebody for kicks, and then these council people come in here with this surface play, you mm -hmm. had to put it on a complaint, mm -hmm. flat out. And it ain't no you don't say who you is. We had to know who you was. All this sending emails in the dark. And another thing, when we vote on something, just like we were concerning that letter with Ms. Shasta, this board voted in this room that a letter be sent out and that we look the letter over because it was inappropriate what has happened. Mm -hmm. We ain't done that yet. But yet folks is telling me what I can do on it, on my free time. But we're not handling complaints. When somebody violates the charter, we too scared to even send them a letter. But yet, we want to tell people about their, how they can't speak freely on their free time. What I say on A10 has nothing to do with the charter. I'm here to make sure that the charter is being upheld. That's what I agree to do for free with my free time for the residents. And I'm totally prepared to do that. Yes, I do go to council meetings sometimes, but like Ms. Dorsey said, a lot of times I don't even go to the council meetings because I don't want to get emotionally caught up in case something jumps off. I want to be able to review the issue objectively as it regards to the charter. But for whatever reason, this board is all about personal stuff and dictating to one another, and we don't got just like the city council and the administration. We can only enforce stuff on certain people. We don't lock nobody up. We don't get nobody no whooping. We don't try to fire nobody. We tell you what you did, violated the charter, then you're supposed to, if Ms. Dorothy is here, I'm glad you're here. You know, if it's an appropriate department that should be notified, then we direct that to them, and they have a boss over those departments who supposed to be earning a check enforcing those things. I shouldn't have to be out here fighting with you because you didn't fell out with a council person and he said this and that. that. So what they talked about you. Mm -hmm. They talked about me. They talked about Jesus. I'm here to look at this charter. Have I violated the charter? No, I have not. Have I broken any laws? No, I have not. Do we have issues that this board has voted on that has not been taken care of? such as the PCAR, Ms. Shasta, this letter going out that has not been addressed? No, nobody's saying that about, but every every time I come in here, I gotta defend some personal stuff. Hmm. You know, everything I do is wrong, but people can put their hands on me after the tough not to. I'm wrong for that. You know, everything is your fault. Well, I'll carry that heavy load, but I want you to understand I'm here for the child. That's it. I'm not here for love, right? personal, political, none of that. Just a child. Because that's what, that's what I took the oath to do. I had to swear in. They said, are you going to enforce the charter? That's what they asked me when I swore in. Now, I don't know about nobody else. Thank you. We're going to take the next
Oh, she got to leave too? Oh, no, we're not leaving, Miss Little. Hey, we're going to wait out here. We're going to wait out here. We ain't going to leave. We're going to know tonight if you got appointed. Thank you, Mr. King. Y'all going y'all gonna to let us know tonight if she got appointed. Okay, man, I don't think he heard me. Oh, yeah, we got to get Tanae on the show. Okay, I'm still alive. 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 Thank you, because I was in route, and I was listening. Was you listening? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. I got the sweating, and I got, and I broke out in a, in a hot sweat because you know, the man was sure. You know, Candace came up here live, too. What did she say? Well, if her mouth moved, we know she Hold on. Hold on. She on both sides of her lipstick. Hold on. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. She threats against me. And the man put a water poster on me. So We're trying to get Miss Tanae Dorsey when she comes out. Hey there, how are you? You all right? Miss Little right here. Yeah, I'm all right. You know Tanae, my cousin. I ain't yeah. know that. Oh, she is? Yeah, that's my little cousin. Her, my auntie that died back in April was her grandmother. That's Miss Shax, the little right here. We're still alive. How you doing, Miss Little? Say hi to the ATM family. You guys, you going to sit out here with us tonight. We're going to wait and see if you got that job tonight. That's all. Okay, then. Right. I told him, I said, don't, don't call me in the morning. <laughs> I want to know tonight. We're going to be right here. We're waiting for you. Miss Tanae Dorsey right here, the late sister-in-law, Eric Dorsey right here. They family. We love you, dog. And let him see this. Hey. Uh-oh, let him see that. Let him see that hug right there. Let him see that love. Yeah, we still alive, Miss. Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's words of encouragement right there. That's two good black women standing there encouraging each other. Miss Dorsey, can we get you on 18? Yeah. Can we get you on 810 News Media Group? Sure. Y'all heard that. Y'all heard that. Miss Dorsey said that she would come on 810 News Media Group. We're going to have you on there talking. We're going to give our own decisions on there. Uh, I, think my, I think the camera leaning a little bit. All right, y'all. We're we going to get exclusive footage from Miss Tanya Burns. Miss Miss Burns, you know. Hold on, y'all. Don't go nowhere. We got we got Miss Burns right here. Councilwoman Burns, you were on your way here. Did you have the phone on? Were you listening? Did you hear your colleague? I did not hear her, but my phone was finishing up there. Well, she's up, Mickey. We lied. I hope they was good things. They was telling you about me. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Hmm. I'm not a black woman. I'm not a black woman. It's hard not to know that. Right, right. Let me come up. Right. And then he says, I fall for racial justice or injustice and civil rights. No. He couldn't. So his personal opinion is, I'm going to say, he has some mental health issues. Something's wrong with him. But I did hear what you said. And so then I was like, you know, because I couldn't find my ear there. So I was trying to take him home, but I put on the what's the name? Well, can we take you? Let's take you off of the council and let's just talk. Let's talk the council. No, let's just talk to Tanya Burns, a black woman. How did you feel knowing that Candace, a black woman, came up here and defended Doug Matthews to the ethics and the accountability board? Desperate to keep her seat. I think she lost it, like doing that. 
Uh, it has nothing to do with color when you about the situation. That is a job that has nothing to do with Democrat, Republican, um, if you're a Baptist, Protestant, whatever. That is non-biased. But for her to defend that racist, yes, those racist comments and rhetoric, something's wrong with her. As a black woman, right. her skin is, she checks the black box too. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. And he keeps making um, little racist comments and folks such as um, perfectly manicured fingernails, you know, stereotyping black women like uh, their welfare queens. And her perfectly manicured finger, first he lied, I did not stick my finger in his face. I had my iPad. He had requested to see a copy of my receipt because he was questioning a shirt that I had, which is out of his distance. That's like me asking him, you know, what's the name of his jeans or what's, you know, what's the label in his coat. We don't do that. Right. So for him to try to reduce me down to the lowest common denominator is a black woman as the answer to him. Like they used to do when they created the welfare system. They wanted to know um, who, who was staying in the home. Um, uh, if you everything you had to do, if you had a car, if you had any assets. Well, I've never been on welfare. So Doug needs to mind my, his own business. I didn't have baby daddy. I had fathers. Oh, they're saying they can't hear you. Hold on. Let me. I don't want to put her head in the. In the oh, no. <laughs> you know, they make memes out of us. Okay, can you speak up just a little bit? We, we is in the library. Oh, yeah, we're in the library, y'all. Y'all know we got to whisper. So I think that what Doug is trying to do is portray. But this is where we have to look. Where does his message come from? His mm -hmm. messaging comes from with the approval of Mayor Neely. Right. Mayor Neely is sending Doug. If you look at the three-page story, he wrote a story. With the three or four pages, mm -hmm. it was illustrated. He had the graphics, too. Yeah. Um, he made himself awesome. the white savior. Mm -hmm. He was saving the black people of the poor black folk. And Flint, he was going to come in his white hat. He's going to save us all. And he was done with the sheriff. He was the smart sheriff was going to save us. And then I was the villain in the black hat mm -hmm. with some big sunglasses on. And my skin was that of, I was a snake. Mm -hmm. Is what he that was my character in the story he wrote, which in itself is extremely racist. Coming from a person who said he's not a racist right. and he fought for civil rights. This man is a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite and he's a liar. So for Candace to support that, even on the basis of let me set aside whatever my differences is for or Tanya, this man keeps coming after a whole ethnic group, mm -hmm. a whole race. He has comments about black people and specifically black women that he feels comfortable. So then when you comment back, he feels, he has the nurse to become, I'm the victim. You know, this like we have counsel on the Karen. He is our, uh, Doug is our kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Our kids because he feels he can lie and then make the public to, to help him. And then it sits back there with the police mm -hmm. and asks them for, you know, to, to keep him safe. Right. Or he comes in here and hisses and and writes stories and then makes a wanted poster. Well, a wanted poster means dead or alive. There you go. Dead or alive. There you, you go. Wanted poster, yep. I'm wanted. Yep. You know, that means he, he, him to share, he's going to come after me until he kills me. He wants me dead. He wants me gone. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants me locked up. Mm -hmm. For what? Because I'm a black woman? Hmm. You know, because I'm speaking my truth. Right. And I'm not going to allow him to come and talk crazy. If he's a, if he's a racist and you're a bigot, I'm going to call you out. Right. I'm not giving you a pass until later. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. So when I heard and I was listening to, to come in, and thank you for standing in that gap for me, because I could not speak for myself. I truly mean that. We gotta stick up for each other. Because here he is, and he felt so comfortable. Yeah. And he's not from here. Yeah. He didn't even know what where student school was at first. I remember when I first talked to him, which is predominantly black only. So I'm going I'm to continue to speak up and I hate to say stand my ground because Florida has misused that so much. But we know that black lives are lost. But you stand in that gap for me until I got here. Yeah. It's important because they keep coming here week after week after week. Yeah. If I have to lie and defend a racist to keep a seat at the council person, I'm not worthy to sit in that seat. Yeah. And if Candace, and I didn't hear, I'm going to go back and listen, which I believe everybody said, she came here defending the racist. She shouldn't be sitting in that seat. And then they say, oh, well, no one defended when people said, look, even it ran up on me, not once but twice. I was calm, stayed in my seat. 
But they all ran up on me. The police officer, Officer Davis, had to tell her, stand back, shut your mouth, because she couldn't hear Oh, they're arguing in there. I know. Oh, I'm going to have to turn the camera around. <laughs> right? But the attorney in this looking like, I'll be glad that it's over. <laughs> They are in there talking about that job. Well, we out here. We just out here. Somebody should have left their phone in there. I know that's right. They, they was looking. They was looking. We should have laid something. We had pause 10 G time where we could pick it up through the walls. Listen, we can pick it up already. Let's do it. Thank you, Tanya. And her letter. Her letter spoke. She spoke up for Miss Little. Good, good, because she should. How do you run an office with no P cards? Right, that's crazy. Which is no, 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 no credit cards. Mm -hmm. No credit cards. They, they followed her by a We in a library, y'all. She they can't scream. They didn't pay her her money. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep showing up for 16 months and don't be paid your money. Right. Who's going to do that? Right. This woman continued to show up, didn't have any money, didn't have out of water, hey, and didn't have heat. Mm -hmm. She had no heat. She just got heat about four weeks ago. So they were trying to freeze her out. Oh my God. Starve her out, couldn't we'll give her water. You know, and couldn't give her her money. I don't even, she ever get, I don't even know if she got all her money in her backpack. I don't, I don't know either. Yeah. So know. for 16 months, and she's the secretary, the director, the interim ombudsman, she did every role. Mm -hmm. Every role. So. Well, thank you, and we're going to tune in with uh, uh, Truth Talk with, what is it, Truth Talking with Tiger Saturday at 10 a.m. Because I'm going to watch this with Kenny this day, because I have my phone. <laughs> well, you know what? Up. Here, let me let me sw switch it around. I mean, yeah. Listen, y'all, I was so hot in there. I was trying to wait, because it was like any minute. I thought Tiny was just going to run through the door, right? <laughs> so I'm waiting, and so I'm listening to Candace, and I'm listening to Doug, and then y'all know me. Me and self was fighting in my head by the time <laughs> Candace got done, and I just couldn't take it no more. Somebody had to defend Tanya. And I said what I had to say. I got choked up on a piece of candy because it went down the wrong way, but I couldn't stop talking. I had to get out as much as I could. But that's what we're supposed to do. It's enough of that having people come and just tear you down and people scared to say something or just don't say nothing. I don't think nobody here was scared to say anything, so let me correct that. But we need more people to start speaking up for each other and if we did, the city would be a much better place. You got to quit running around lying, just lie after lie after lie. Because it's always going to be somebody sitting there that knows the truth. And I hope they start speaking up. So I'm about to end this live. We're going to wait it out as much as we can. If you look behind me, they in closed session now. They're talking about they got three things to discuss. Um, the appointment of Miss Little to the ombuds person. They got the response to Doug's Matthews request and then the update of the rules. So I don't know if we just gonna hang out here in the library, um, stick and stay, it's more 18 on the way tonight, but go back and watch the beginning of this video. If you missed it, you'll hear Candace from the seventh ward. I think she just completely lost her seat tonight. She completely lost whatever chance she had of getting reelected when she came in and defended Doug. That, in my opinion, she's done. So go back, watch Candace, watch Doug, and then the response. See you later. <laughs>